together as we introduce comedy <coughs> sensation, Jan Murray. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just a little bit disheveled right now. I got back a couple weeks ago from my honeymoon. We took a cross-country trip. It was beautiful, you know. We had such a good time. We went out to Amarillo, me and my, my bride, uh, well, my ex, my wife. We started combining the honeymoon with uh, the divorce trip. I'll tell you more about that later. But uh, I'll tell you, you know, I thought Chicago was tough when I was working for Al Capone, but man, Amarillo was uh, uh, crazy, you know. like. Uh, and people talk differently out there. You know, in New York, people say, hey, I'm going to the store. Out there, they say, hey, I'm going to the store. Cover me. <laughs> and then some of the restaurants, you know, here in New York, we have restaurants that serve a leg of lamb. Out there, they serve broken leg of lamb. <laughs> but we had a pretty good time. We did some dancing out there before the divorce. Uh, we got so addicted to the Texas two-step, we had to enter a 12-step program. <laughs> Uh, family style restaurant. <laughs> it was just like my house back here. You know, everybody was arguing and fighting and throwing plates across the room and stuff, and just like back at home. But um, the, waiter, the waiter was so rude. You know, my wife sat down and she said, Do you serve cold fish? And he said, Well, you're here, aren't you? <laughs> this, you might have seen the billboards outside of Amarillo uh, free 10 pound steak if you can eat the whole thing. <laughs> Of course, they don't tell you that they're going to charge you like five dollars for the water and uh, rent you the napkin and everything. But I was pretty famished, so I said, I'm going to give it a try. What the heck? So I sat down with this huge 10-pound T-bone steak, right? And my gosh, I polished the whole thing off. I called the waiter over. I said, look, I did it. He said, no, you've got to eat the bone, too. Uh, I hate when that happens, you know. And then, and then it got caught in my gullet you know, all the way back across the country. Well, thank God it's not protruding anymore. I think it finally went down. But quite a racket they had there. Um, the chef's brother was a doctor, and he had a clinic next door. And uh, he had a special on emergency tracheotomies. No! So that was very convenient. And then the third brother had a brothel down, down the street. So after dinner, my wife and I were walking down the street, and, and this bum was sitting in front of this cat house. And he said, can I borrow $10 till payday? And I said, well, when's payday? He said, how the hell should I know? You're the one that's working. <laughs> but, um, I should have realized it wasn't going to work out with this uh, wife, well, ex-wife of mine. But, um, you know, the morning after the wedding, I woke up, and I looked across the bed, and I said, my god, what did I get into? You know, she was like hideous looking. And I was looking pretty good, you know, all things considered. But I finally realized what had happened. All of her makeup was on my face. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, she, had, she had some pretty bad habits. Um, like, she would go to the beauty shop for hours at a time, and that was just for the estimate, you know. <laughs> And then she would get a mud pack, and she looked great for a while, and then the mud would start falling off. So. First, now, I realize I'm no prize, you know, I mean, I'm, it's getting to the point where my dog has to fantasize about other people when he dry humps my leg. Now, I am losing my hair, you know, I realize. Well, actually, I'm not losing my hair. It's actually growing through my scalp and out my nose, so. I, I'm just waiting for it to get long enough so I can calm it over, you know. <laughs> yeah, another thing that really irritated me about my ex-wife was um, she would put her reading glasses on top of her head, and then she would forget that they were up there, and then she would put another pair up there. Have you ever seen these people that put their reading glasses on top of their head? But my wife took it to the next level. At the end of the day, she had like a dozen pairs of reading glasses on top of her head. <laughs> no, get this. So every time she went outside, a little fire would start out there. <laughs> oh man, the fire department was pretty irritating with this one too. But, um, there was one good thing about being married. I always had the final words. Well, yes dear, <laughs> yes dear, <laughs> yes dear. And then I found out that she was anorexic. I started seeing less and less of her. <laughs> I still feel guilty about the way I left her. She came out of the shower and said, honey, I feel like a new woman. I said, yeah, me too. <laughs> but she 
she said, she said she didn't want to see me anymore, so I took all her reading glasses and I poked her in the eye. I showed her. I showed her. But, um, and then the divorce was kind of, you know, in addition to being messy, it was kind of like weird. It was kind of like some kind of weird game show or something. She, she was a big winner. You know, she won a house and a car. Yeah, I won a, a suitcase and a toothbrush, you know. <laughs> She did call me after the divorce and, and asked me uh, if I could tell her how to change the light in her bathroom because it had burned out. I said, um, well, it's pretty easy, actually. All you got to do is, is fill up the bathtub with water <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then take it from there. But, um, oh, man, it was, it was rough. Uh, but all my problems actually started when I was a child. See, I was deprived of a lot of things like oxygen. I was brought up believing that a balanced diet was having a beer in each hand, so. <laughs> um, anyways, my mom was really mean to me. She told me when I was a kid, Murray, if a strange man ever comes up, drives up, and offers you candy to get in the car, just take it, you know? <laughs> so, hey, Seymour, get the car started up and get the candy ready. I'll be out in a few minutes, okay? That's how I ended up here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And how can we thank you? Okay, remember everybody. He's got a future. I'll tell you, you're going to see a lot more of that comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, earlier tonight we saw a great act, some young folks, and we said we were going to bring them back during the second part of our